I build all of my pages and all of my websites using Thrive Architect. And I've built hundreds of them, and I've even replicated some of the best designs that publicly traded companies are using without writing a single line of code. And I'm saying all of this because there are a handful of tips and tricks and especially guidelines that you may be interested in discovering if you too like using Thrive Architect to build your websites. So make sure to stick around for the whole thing. Before I start, I just wanted to let you know that I not only talk about designing WordPress websites, but about a lot of topics surrounding building an online business. I encourage you to visit our channel, peek around, and if the topics of our videos are of any interest to you, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. So, Thrive Architect. If we start off from the premise that here at Thrive Themes, we build all of our products from a conversion-focused mindset, you'll soon realize that most of you guys probably don't need to learn a lot of the nifty design work that I'm about to talk about. You see, one of the beauties that Thrive Architect has to offer is that it already comes with plenty of pre-designed templates, page blocks, content blocks that have already been designed for you by our team of professional designers. But if you have a passion for web design or if you're thinking of, I don't know, maybe starting your own marketing agency or if you'd like to help others with their websites in your free time, then knowing and putting these tips and tricks into practice will open up a whole new world of possibilities for you because you won't longer be subject to relying on our designs. You're gonna be able to create your own designs or start off work uh, from our designs, but customize them to fit your own needs however you wish. So let's start off talking about paddings and margins. Look, I'm probably gonna be dedicating an entire video just to talk about paddings and margins because they are the key factor that will make or break your site. The main difference between an awesome looking site and one that comes across as being clunky or not very clean is the smart use of breathing room. How much space do you have between elements? And most importantly, has that space that separates elements and sections from one another been meticulously thought through? Now you may be thinking this guy has some sort of OCD. I mean, what difference does it make if you make use of more or less breathing room? Well, it's not so much how much breathing room you're making use of, which obviously needs to make sense too, but it has to do more with how consistent you are with your margins and paddings and with establishing rules and guidelines that will make that consistency be rewarded in the form of a very clean design. So here are a few tips and tricks that I want you to take into account when it comes to margins and paddings. Feel free to take notes. The first thing that I want you to do is forget or try to get rid of this bad habit of using margins. Margins we are rarely going to be using. Paddings, which is the internal space between an element and the edge of its border is what we're typically going to be using to create breathing room. Margins I only use when I want to push two objects away from each other. Uh, for example, sometimes we want to add in a little bit of space in between an image and a heading. And in, you know, in that instance, since we want to push these two elements away from each other, we would make use of margins. But paddings are, in my opinion, the secret sauce to clean design. And many people that start off designing with Thrive Architect or any other page builder, to be honest, gets this feeling that, you know, margins and paddings essentially do the same thing, right? Because the end result is kind of similar. You end up with breathing room in between two elements. You know, if you add in uh, 20 pixels of top internal padding or 20 pixels of top margin, uh, you're gonna end up with a very similar result. But that's not exactly true. As opposed to margins, paddings don't try to push elements away from each other. The distance from element A and element B is not going to be affected in any way whatsoever if I add internal padding to one of these elements. Yes, you may get the feeling that they're further apart because we're creating internal space in one of those elements, but the elements are still at the same exact distance from each other. And this is because paddings create internal space within the element itself. And this is important because, uh, you know, that means that paddings don't alter the distance of other surrounding elements. If you want a full dedicated video on how I use margins and paddings, please let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, there's more that I have to share. For example, you know, how many pixels you should be using, uh, how to make paddings and margins mobile responsive and a whole lot more. I mean, it's a, it's a very important topic if you're into design. So yeah, just let me know down in the comment section. 
The next thing that I'd like for you to start embracing is absolute positioning. Absolute positioning allows us to tell Thrive Architect in which corner of a given content box or column or background section should our element sit on. Now, why would we ever do this? Well, we do this to create layouts like this one. You see how this flower decoration, which is honestly just an image, is sitting in the bottom right corner of the content box? Now, it's being pushed a little bit towards the edge of its parent container to create this effect of having it sit at the edge, but regardless of how big or small our device is, you know, whether people are visiting from a laptop or a smartphone, the image is sticking to the bottom right corner of the content box. And this is thanks to absolute positioning. Now, I don't want you to go adding in absolute positioning to all of your elements, okay? You're only going to want to use absolute positioning when you know by heart that you want an element sticked to a fixed location, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, most times, or at least in my case, I simply use it to create layouts like the one I've shown you. Now let's talk about the C index. This one is very easy to understand. It's going to let you do some really cool things. In CSS, the C index of an element determines how further up the page that element is going to get displayed compared to other elements on that same page. Now, in order to better understand this, I want you to think about a Photoshop file for a second. You know, in Photoshop, you can have an image layer on top of an image layer on top of another image layer, and you can drag layers on top of each other depending on which one you want to be Oh, you want to have sitting on top of the other one. Well, this is exactly what we're doing with the C index. We are simply modifying which elements on our page get displayed further up the top. And the higher the C index I assign to an element, the further up the top of the page it will get displayed. I want you to concentrate on these three layers, the bottom text element behind the image, the image of the lady, and then the text element on top of the image. I can modify which element gets displayed further up the page by modifying their C indexes. If I give the bottom text layer a higher C index than the C indexes that the other two elements have, all of a sudden that bottom text layer is going to be displayed at the very top of the page. I wanted to throw in a section in this video about parallax and how you can moderately use it to bring in a little bit of more life to your pages. but. I just did a whole video about this, so there's a link popping up on screen right now, right here, in case you wanna go check it out. But what I can mention, which I know that many people don't know about, is that Thrive Architect elements can be sticky. Now, when I hear most WordPress users talking about something being sticky, most of them just talk about headers being sticky on scroll. But the truth is, you can have entire sections of your page stick and have them scroll as users scroll down the page. You're not always gonna use this, but check this out. Isn't this cool? With Thrive Architect, you can have columns stick on screen until they reach the next element on page. And this is not parallax. It seems like it is because you're seeing the entire column scroll, but this is a very simple sticky effect that you too can use. All right, the question is for you now, which techniques are you making use of with Thrive Architect that I haven't mentioned in this video? Oh, by the way, if you have a site powered by Thrive Architect and you want me to review it on an upcoming video, please send me an email with the URL to the address showing up on screen right now. And if for whatever reason you still don't have a license for Thrive Architect, there's a link in the description box down below that you can click on to grab one today at the best possible price. It's been a real pleasure. I truly appreciate your time. I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.